is Zoe Harkham and I'm author of The Obesity Epidemic. What I'm doing in a series of short videos is just running through some of the chapters to give you a flavour of the book and hopefully to generate some interest in it. One of my favourite chapters in the book is chapter four and it talks about a most brilliant obesity experiment done about 50 years ago which so few people have even heard of let alone studied and yet it's quite possibly the ultimate obesity experiment ever done. A guy called Ansel Keys did something called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment and it started in about 1945. Now at the time it started, people didn't know exactly when World War II was going to end. And America could look across to Europe and realise that Europe had had rationing since 1941. People were getting very hungry and this brilliant doctor decided that it would be very important to, have, to understand what would happen if the war didn't end soon and actually rationing changed to starvation. We had never seen before what would happen if the human body were actually put in a starvation situation. So Ansel Keys set about to do exactly that and he recruited 36 conscientious objectors who didn't want to go to war and he gave them an alternative to going to war. Now these men actually came to realise that they would have been better off going to war. Such was the challenge that they went through with this experiment, it just about defeated some of them mentally, emotionally and physically. So it was a year-long experiment and in the first 12 weeks, Ansel Keys had these men hand-picked for their health, many of them were carrying weight to start with, so they did have weight to lose, but they were seen as very mentally and physically healthy and able to cope with this experiment. And I don't think Ansel Keys had any idea just how much of a detriment this was going to be to these guys. So in the first 12 weeks, he observed that the men pretty much maintained their weight at about 3,200 calories a day, and they were doing about 45 minutes walking a day, just about two to three miles walking at a fairly steady pace. So having monitored them for 12 weeks, he then put them into the experiment period. It was only 24 weeks long, which is far less than a lot of people try to go on a diet for. And he gave these men a deficit of about 1,600 calories a day. So he took them down to about 1,600 calories a day, which again is pretty generous by the standards of many modern diets. And they were to continue the two to three miles walking a day and a nice gentle pace for about 45 minutes. Now, if you believe the 3,500 calorie formula, which people who follow me will know that I do not, this experiment alone proved this formula wrong because you can just very simply put in the maths and say a deficit of 1,600 calories a day over this period of time, every man should have lost at least 78 pounds in fat alone and more on top from lean tissue and water. And in fact, the average weight loss of the men over the 24 weeks was about 37 pounds. Now, the lightest man in the study should actually have died um, barely sort of 12 to 20 weeks into the study. The body just does not follow that straight line graph. The body will slow, it will resist the weight loss, it will slow down the metabolism, it will stop the base and metabolic rate activities, it will do everything it can to keep the body alive. And it just will not give up fat in quite the way that we're telling people will happen if they try and go on a, a, an eat less diet. And the final stage of the experiment, there were two stages which were very interesting. One was called the rehabilitation period and what Keyes tried to do at the end of 24 weeks was to give different groups different foods to refeed them, re-nourish them and he found all that the body wanted was calories. It didn't matter whether he tried to give them vitamin supplements or protein supplements or mineral supplements, the only thing that these guys were crying out for was calories. They wanted the deficit that they had suffered rebalanced as soon as possible. So he did that for a few weeks and then in the very final part of the experiment he basically said to the men, okay you're free to eat now, whatever you want, whenever you want. And these men were eating somewhere around 11,000 calories a day. They had insatiable appetites. And how similar is that to what happens when we go on a diet and then we break the diet and we just find we can't stop eating. It's a natural human instinct to try and recover that deficit. Now the men actually put on all the weight that they had lost back on, plus about 10%. And again, how similar is that to modern dieting? How many people go on a diet weighing, let's say, 10 stone, they lose weight, get to 9 stone, 
and before they know it, they're at 10 and a half. Then they go on a diet and they lose to nine and a half, and before they know it, they're at 11. And we're actually going on an upwards trend with these little dips in the calorie controlled diets along the way. And men who had never previously reported feeling any kind of body awareness at all started feeling fat. Um, he turned them basically from anorexics to bulimics in about a one year period and completely obsessed with food throughout the whole time. They gave up their studies, they couldn't think about anything other than food. Again, how similar is that to dieting? So chapter four goes through that story, the Minnesota starvation experiment. And then at the end, we ask the key question, why doesn't eating less mean that you will weigh less? And it will take you through the answer to that question because that's the killer. We must not eat less, we must eat better. And chapter four will explain why. So I hope you enjoy it and look forward to any feedback comments that you may have. Thanks very much for listening.